Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy, actually a Photography 101 episode, and I've got my glasses on a little crooked so they don't reflect quite so much into the monitor, so I don't know, they look kind of goofy, I know, but eh. Hopefully that will look a little bit better so you don't just see these big reflections. Well, today I'm going to talk about some concepts that really confused me when I was starting out in photography. So, like most people, I took pictures even as a young kid, but sometime in the like late 1990s, people around me started to say, wow, you really take nice pictures. And I have to tell you that my picture styling really improved by taking more pictures and just trying to think a little bit more about the composition of what I was taking. And I really had very, very poor understanding of the mechanics of cameras and how I could use those, those under, that understanding of how cameras worked to take pictures. And so like most people, I started out with compact cameras because that's really what was available in those days. And I still use compact cameras all the time. And they had a, a thing on them called the Time Zoom. So this little Sony, which is a favorite in our family, it's a couple years old, he has a four time zoom. And I would have to tell you that I really did not understand what that meant. I thought it magnified things four times um, because things would get bigger when you would zoom out. But that's not what it means. And in fact, when I bought my first DSLR in 2003, there was a Canon Digital Rebel. It didn't talk about time zoom at all. It talked about the lens that was like so many millimeters. And I thought, millimeters? Why can't they just tell me the time zoom? That's so much easier for me to understand. Well, it's because they're two completely different types of things. So I want to go through those concepts today and hopefully make them a little clearer. If I don't do a very good job, I, I sincerely apologize. I've been thinking about how to do this and it's it's just, it's hard to conceptualize. So, so what is focal length in millimeters? Well, technically, if I was focusing with a lens, here's my magnifying glass, at a object at infinity, so we're just going to say something that's really, really far away, like a mountain range or something, onto a piece of film or a sensor, the focal length, and this actually has a picture on it, it's upside down because that's what lenses do, the focal length would be the distance when I'm focusing on that object at infinity, between the lens and the sensor. So I'm gonna try from here to here. That's the focal length of the lens. So what does that really mean? So let's take a look at a couple of lenses. This is a 20 millimeter lens. It only has a focal length of 20 millimeters and you can see it's relatively short. This is a 300 millimeter prime lens it only has a focal length of 300 millimeters. Obviously, it's much, much bigger. All right. What these lenses do is, at their focal lengths, they have a different kind of wideness to their angle of view. So lenses with short focal lengths have very wide angles of view. So they're great for taking things like landscapes, or if I'm trying to fit as many people into a picture as possible. As I increase the focal length, the angle of view starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so I'm focusing on a much more narrow slice of what I'm actually seeing. What does that do? Well, effectively, it magnifies the image on the sensor. Because I'm instead of looking at all of this, I'm just looking at a little piece in the center. Now you may think that this, so if I, mer if I took this camera, here's a D90, if I put this lens on here, you would think that the actual focal length would be measured from the lens up here to the sensor, which is back here someplace, and that would be exactly 20 millimeters. Well, it's sort of kind of maybe around that range, but not really. And that's because lenses aren't really, they don't consist of just one element, right? Like this magnifying glass just has one glass element. Lenses really might have six, 12, I don't even know how many. It, they have many elements in them. So the actual length of the tube to the sensor is not necessarily going to be exactly what we're talking about. But a longer focal length will, have, will be a lot bigger than a short focal length. 
So that's focal length. So focal length is going to do two things. It's going to, to show me how wide of a view I have, and thereby it's going to show me how much it magnifies the image on the sensor. So you have to have a standard to compare because sensors, and just like film, come in all different sizes. So the typical standard that we use when we're talking about focal length is standard 35 millimeter film because that was the most popular film for, for decades and decades. And the closest example of that that we have in the digital era is what's called a full frame sensor. Now most people won't use a camera with a full frame sensor because they're very expensive to manufacture and the cameras cost in the thousands of dollars. So those are like for professionals. Um, this particular camera, which is an older camera, it's a D90, has what's called an APS-C size sensor, which is still quite large, but it's much smaller than a full frame sensor. If I go back to my little digi camera here, this has a 1 over 2.3 size sensor. I know it's very confusing. Who, these are all like dissimilar terms. But this sensor is much, much smaller than in my DSLR here. So what does that mean when it comes to another term, which is crop factor? Okay, so I couldn't get this in focus last time. I'm going to try to... Can you see that? Okay, so let's say these three houses um, were in view with a, let's say, 50 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor. So you can see all three houses. If I use a smaller sensor, so we're going to turn this into a smaller sensor, you can see that the amount of light that's being shined on the sensor, because all this other part of the sensor is no longer there, it's a smaller sensor, is going to make this image look bigger. So this sensor is cropped. So it's like if you cropped a picture in Photoshop or something. So here it is, full, full frame. I bring it down to a crop, and it makes it look bigger. So when we look at cameras, we have to understand their crop factor. Because if I put this, for instance, 300 millimeter lens on this D90, which has a smaller sensor than a 35 millimeter piece of film, it is a crop factor of approximately 1.5. So this 300 millimeter lens is going to look like a 450 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor. If I put this 300 millimeter lens, uh, if I could, I can't, of course, and I attached it to this little camera here, this camera has an over five times crop factor, I think it's like 5.6, so you do the math, um, you know, it's going to be 1,500 plus millimeters, uh, it's going to look like that on the sensor. So the crop factor also affects how large the magnification of a lens is. And that's why when you're ever making a super zoom camera, you always have a small size sensor in it, because that sensor has a very large crop factor and so maybe a lens that really is only 200 millimeters long is going to look like a 1200 millimeter uh, lens on a bigger camera. Hopefully, hopefully that's understandable. So we talked about uh, focal length in millimeters which effectively magnifies the image, it narrows the angle of view, makes a longer lens. Um, it, and we talked about uh, field of view, and we talked about crop factor. Now, there's one thing that I also want to talk, to talk about, which was kind of confusing to me, and that's zoom ratio. And when I was using my little digi zooms exclusively before I got the uh, Canon Digital Rebel, I really kind of thought, not too wisely, that zoom ratio was kind of like magnification. So like a three times zoom magnify the image three times, kind of like a microscope or something. That's not the case at all. Zoom ratio just lets you know how a lens goes from what to what if it's a zoomable lens. So let's go back to our prime lenses. This lens only has a focal length of 300 millimeters. It doesn't have anything less. This is it just this is all it can do. So it has a zoom ratio of one. Doesn't zoom. 
right? This lens, this is, which is a 20 millimeter lens, can't zoom out at all. It also has a zoom ratio of one. Ah, how confusing, right? So obviously this 20 millimeter lens, which is a wide angle lens, is going to give me a much wider view, much less magnification than this 300 millimeter lens, which is going to give me a much narrower view, just, just you know, much narrower and a much greater magnification, but they both have a zoom ratio of one. So zoom refers to lenses that can zoom. Now, um, this is not the lens I'm telling you it is, but we're going to pretend that this lens is a 25 to 50 millimeter zoom. So when I'm in the tightest it, it, or the widest it can be, it's 25 millimeter focal length. When I zoom out, it's a 50 millimeter focal length. So this lens would have a two times zoom because 50 is twice as much as 25. If I had a lens, let's say this lens here, we're going to pretend that this is a zoom lens, and maybe this went from 150 millimeters to 300 millimeters. It's also a two times zoom, right? Because it goes from 150, twice as much of that as 300, even though it's going to be showing a much more magnified image. So when you talk about zoom, what you're really talking about is a special type of lens that can have multiple focal lengths and those focal lengths we're talking about the range so it does give us important information but it doesn't really necessarily tell us about the magnification abilities of the zoom it just tells us about the range so um, for instance this we're going to kind of approximate this this is actually an 18 to a 105 lens so this goes from a very wide angle to a telephoto angle. Um, so telephoto is anything, let's say over 80 or something millimeters, uh, maybe a little bit less than that, depending on how you want to count it. So if we said this was from 20 to 100, this would be a five time zoom. And the advantage of knowing that is if, let's say I took this camera on vacation, I would know that I would be able to take some very like wide angle shots, like landscapes, and some telephoto shot so like a hundred you had a hundred millimeter focal length if I wanted it to zoom in a little bit on something so this would be a great lens to take on a trip but again zoom ratio just refers to how much a particular lens can zoom it has nothing to do with the actual or it only indirectly has to do with the actual focal length so what do we talk about today and I hope this was clear so we talked about focal length the longer the focal length and that's the distance from the lens, if you were just using like a single lens, to the sensor. The longer the focal length, the narrower, narrower the angle of view, and the more magnified that image will appear. The shorter the focal length, the wider the angle of view, and the more stuff that I'm going to be able to see in that image, and the less magnification I'm going to see. Remember, if we take the exact same lens, but we have a smaller sensor, what we're effectively doing is we're cropping out the outside portions of the image and we're only looking at the center portion. So that crop factor will make the, the image look more magnified. So crop factor affects magnification. It's significant if you go from full frame to let's say an APS-C size sensor, but it's really significant if you went from like full frame to the kind of tiny sensors that you have in a little digi cam. In fact, it's 5.6 times more, if you can say, crop factor magnification if you want to use that word. The other thing we talked about was the zoom ratio, which doesn't have anything to do with the actual magnification. What it says is, is if you have a zoomable lens, how big is that range? Is it just a very small range that it can zoom through or is it a larger range? And so lenses that have very large zoom ratios are great travel lenses because it's sort of like packing a bunch of lenses in your bag with just taking one lens. So um, with that, I'd like to say have a wonderful, wonderful day.
And if you get some time, please give my podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's on iTunes and other podcatching sites. And enjoy spring. Here in the northern Illinois area, it's freezing cold. This is the middle of May, and it lightly snowed yesterday. Yikes. Bye-bye.